theory of biotechnology and bioengineering. My name is Christoph Hittmann. I come from the Biochemical Engineering Institute at Braunschweig University of Technology. We are very happy that you have interest in our work and we would like to use the following minutes of this short video to explain you some of the ideas and concepts that we have been utilizing to increase recombinant protein production, a relevant area in industrial biotechnology. As you all know, today we produce many proteins which are important in, in, in the use of medicine and therapeutics, but we also produce a lot of enzymes for industrial processes in food and feed technology and so on. And uh, the recent years have been characterized by a continuous increase of the, of the volume of reactors that are used for the production. So today we, we are more and more producing these proteins in very large reactors with very large volume. These reactors are typically linked to suboptimal mixing, which may have an influence on the, on the production pro performance. Due to that, we have now tried to, to engineer and improve a production process for one of the interesting catalysts, Bacillus megatherium. Um, and we have been studying the metabolic properties of this bacterium to find out some specific bottlenecks that we can later use to improve the process. In the following, Claudia Corneli, who is the first author of the paper, will explain you what we did. In our study, we investigated the impact of the production scale on recombinant protein production. For this purpose, we utilized the gram-positive bacterium Bacillus megatherium, expressing the green fluorescent protein GFP. This bug is of high relevance for industrial production. Already in shaking bottles, it accumulates high amounts of the modal protein. To see how the large scale of an industrial process would influence the protein production, we designed a specific reactor setup at the lab scale. Through fine tuning of process control parameters, we were able to adjust substrate and oxygen gradients and thus mimic the large scale process. A metabolic fingerprint of the recombinant bacillus strain then revealed a drastic difference in the availability of intracellular amino acids, the precursors of the protein product. This became impressively obvious from the difference to the reference process in the correlating heat map. The red color reveals those amino acids that were less available inside the producing cell under the large-scale conditions. As can be seen, this was most pronounced for five amino acids, histidine, tryptophan, lysine, aspartate and glutamine. The metabolic fingerprint thus indicated that probably these amino acids, the direct precursors of recombinant protein, might limit its production. This could be nicely exploited to design a knowledge-based feeding strategy. Adding small amounts of the limiting compounds boosted production in the industrial scale conditions by 100%. Thank you very much for your attention and now enjoy reading our paper. For further information, please visit our website ibvt.de.